I dove back into it again. I, I can't leave this alone. You know, it was bothering me. I, I sat there. Sometimes it's better to get away from the device and look at the schematic. It tells a different story without the electricity. And I, I did take some tests earlier and evaluate and make sure things were right. I'll tell you the cliff notes here. Uh, there is a voltage dropping uh, resistor here of 10K that's actually 12K that's skewing the numbers and making this uh, DC, this high tension DC, a little bit lower than it should be. But truth be told, the thing is operating on 117, generally sees 123. That's not causing this distortion. But the distortion had changed. Uh, when I was futzing around with some stuff, and here's the thing, I'm gonna have to, how do I say this? So this is pin one on, on the 12AX7. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to talk about what I've been doing. Look, the, the, the tube's not in, okay? The tube's out. This is pin one on the 12AX7 AC coupled, okay? This is a power supply issue. It's not DC. Take out of the things we we do have, you know, a couple of capacitor that, that we can investigate. You know, obviously it passes AC, but we're not looking that far. I could drop the beam power tube out of this equation as well. We're working towards the power supply, not away from it. And my thing is this: now that I've gone and and bent some stuff up, and we're seeing something that looks like this. Watch this now, and this is this is what's been eating at me. I'm going to add this 100 microfarads in, but I'm gonna add it right here at the edge, right before it goes to pin one. And we're gonna see what happens to the distortion on this waveform and start to tell us a story. You ready? Here we go. Took a second to charge up. When you look at it, what we're seeing, what we're seeing right here is, is is just the uh, um, the characteristic of the single diode rectifier, right? But not only is that less than ideal, which which is obvious, everybody would be in agreement that this is like not good for uh, the type of circuit that would produce sound, have a speaker, or something like that, something that would need to provide a clean waveform. You could see that 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 half of the signal or half of the DC that's being generated is just missing, right? Something that it really it's not really well expressed with with the uh, inadequate filtering, but you know I had that filtering and you could see that right. But more importantly is is this introducing uh, distortion back into the uh, circuit ex itself that's causing this problem? Some sort of harmonic. That's what's getting me. So I would like to go with the extra mile here because this is uh, time for experimentation. What I'd like to see is, ideally, I'd like to say that I have a power supply that I could readily just hook up to this, deactivate that circuit, and pump in the, the 139 volts at 50 milliamps directly into the circuit, shut down everything, and see if this distortion just goes away, because this is very strange. And whatever strangeness it is, it's being exacerbated by this poor rectification of DC. But I have now kicking it up a notch you know, a bridge rectifier that I would like to now throw in here and replace the one that I just upgraded and see if we could not only change the uh, characteristics of the DC, but now we're, we're not talking about DC. Remember, this is this is AC coupled. This is what, what I expect to see improve because maybe this would clean up now as something that is being, is, is radiating out of this transformer into the power supply, right? So this is like some sort of electromagnetic radiation. And if you're wondering at this point if I'm if I'm completely off the reservation here about everything being in such close proximity that, that is actually radiating garbage back into the circuit as, as a signal onto the line and being fed into the input right here on pin one. Yeah, you're right. I'm going off the reservation here by doing this, but this is what I'm doing. So I've wired in the uh, bridge rectifier. Uh, for those who are wondering if uh, this is safe, I, I'm not running 120 volts through here, obviously. That'd be uh, foolish. I run about 20 volts AC, 25 volts, and, and it's monitored with a uh, with a fluke. And that's dialed up in increments of about five volts at a time and monitored with the oscilloscope and the meter. Obviously, I don't flip a switch because that would be foolish. Yeah, so I, I'm seeing how the DC is working, how the DC to AC relationship, the ratio is, and make sure everything's stable. 
So here's my kludge. It's all assembled and I've got um, uh, the 250 ohm resistor, which is, I'll admit, a little bit insufficient. It's running a little bit hot, but that's okay uh, for now. The uh, It's about uh, 15 volts too hot on the output. But I want to show you something. Look at the oscilloscope right here. Notice the settings are the same as before, 2 millivolts per division. Okay? I don't have the filter capacitor connected. This is the, um, like what I would call the before extra filtering. It is only uh, three graticules high. I'll include a, a picture in here. I know it bounces a bit. This is very sensitive at two millivolts. You know, I, I, I move my head and it moves, right? So so now we have a uh, bridge rectifier in here. So we don't have this, this weird DC production going on and it's it's more balanced out, right? Watch what happens now as I add the filter back into the circuit. I'm going to add it now, and we're going to see what the product is. And this is how much it is now reduced with the uh, filter added. Mind you, keep in mind, this is what we're looking at, 2 millivolts. This is, this is AC coupled. And this is the added filter after the bridge rectifier was introduced. And, and this is before and after. And then I'll put up on the screen on the top right here uh, what the before and after looked like when it was a single diode. So this looks like a good time to add in the 12AX7 and see what we're seeing on the, on the speaker. We could hook this oscilloscope now to the speaker and see what artifacts we have there. This time I ended up dropping a uh, 470 on here to bring down the voltage to 143. I think that's close enough, that should be just fine. So I've got that in position and now we're gonna do the final soldering. I've got everything dressed in nice and clean now. Ran the uh, other cable from the uh, transformer up, elongated the hole a bit. I've got the uh, ground coming down through that hole, tying off to the star ground point here around the bottom in the hopes of further reducing any uh, harmonics caused by multiple ground points. It's a possibility. But yeah, that looks rather nice. I didn't cut off the ends yet. I turned them up only to allow for any possible last minute adjustment, but good profile. A couple more observations that I'd like to make. Uh, first of all, first of all, I could hear my... That's very interesting. Uh, I have the oscilloscope connected to the uh, voice coil on this unit, right? And as I talk, it's acting like a microphone. Wow, check this out. It's acting like a microphone and the electricity generated from the voice coil can be seen on the oscilloscope in, in this setting. Very surprising, very cool indeed. We're also at the point that we have far exceeded the other uh, signal tracer in terms of quietness. This, this one, I gotta stick my ear up against the speaker to hear any hum. There's, there's almost nothing at this point. Another thing I just wanted to point out right quick, I haven't mentioned earlier, unlike a, like a guitar amp or, or a stereo amplifier, when you turn this to zero, it's not full quiet. It's it's white noise, and then it's just more white noise as you turn it up. But it's not off at zero. It's just low. So there's always a, a degree of, of signal coming through, and it has to do with the, the way the 12AX7 circuitry is designed in this. There's always some sort of... Uh, feedback going into this unit. So it's also worth pointing out that it's not ever going to be dead quiet. Another observation I had was when I put this back into the case and, and got it all back together and started going to the next portion of testing, everything got really loud again. There was a new hum was introduced and I, I was scratching my head and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Because it hadn't occurred to me and, and I'm not kicking myself for this because the entire time I've been working with this unit, it's been hooked to the oscilloscope it had a ground reference, you know, because this thing is is a floating ground. There's nothing connected to it. It's a two-prong plug, you know, back then. And I, I got some stuff I was testing here, but it's a two-prong plug. There, there's nothing connected to it. And it, there's no ground reference on this thing. In testing it while it was connected to the oscilloscope, I had the, the probe was uh, tied to the probe's ground and that was it, right? But it was, in fact, the oscilloscope itself that was providing the ground reference when the ground of the oscilloscope was connected to the chassis. When this was removed, the device would come extremely loud as there was no ground connected to it. So 
what I did just to test this was I've uh, connected the thing in the usual fashion, but I've connected uh, a, a separate connection here to Earth, right? And I'm going to disconnect it so we could hear the difference. We hear the hum, right? Because now there's floating ground. And I'm going to connect the ground again. So there we go. There's that mystery. Obviously, when you use this device, you know, it's obviously going to be connected to a device under test, and that device is going to be connected with this ground strap. That's what it's there for. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to keep that in mind for as I continue on with this testing event. Another issue happens to be acoustic. I have found through testing that as you push this back into the case, once you get to the last centimeter, the sound just starts reflecting from the metal back forward and amplifies whatever hum is coming out of the speaker from the back of the speaker forward. So just putting it in the case makes the unit louder. And that's just what it is, even the standing noise. This concludes the work on the on the IT12. I've done as much upgrades as I can to uh, mitigate the problems with the design in such a small package with the power transformer in such close proximity to the 12AX7. It has such uh, unbelievable high gain in both stages. It pulls in everything. It is what it is, and this is what it does. It's not a uh, ST70. It's not a, a high-fidelity power amplifier. This is it. We're done. Thanks for watching.